everyone, Ian here at Able Cine in Burbank, and today I am checking out a new cine style zoom lens from Fujinon. This is the MK 18 to 55. There's going to be a companion lens to this, which is the 50 to 135. That lens isn't ready just yet, so today we're just going to concentrate on the 18 to 55. However, both lenses share some common uh, attributes, and that is they are both E mount, uh, they are 4K, and they were made for Super 35 sensors. They are also T2.9 lenses. Uh, to get a better uh, feel for the lens, I'm going to do a series of close-ups, show you the characteristics, and then I took the lens out on this Sony FS5 in 4K and in log, shot some scenes, and then I put it into Resolve, and I will show you the graded results. Before I get into the specifics on this lens, I just want to mention two general specs on it, and that is the length of this lens from the lens mount to the end of the sunshade, looking at nine and a half inches, and the weight of this is a thousand grams, so a little over two pounds, 2.2 pounds. This is a cinema style zoom, so everything on it is manual, and I just wanted to draw your attention to the focus scale. This is a very interesting decision on Fuji's part because it's one of the few lenses that has both meters and feet on a cine style lens. So you can see that we have uh, a reference line for our metric measurement and we also have a line for the feet. We took this camera setup and we went over to one of our rental bays and uh, me and uh, one of our interns, Sophia, set this up and Sophia started uh, or hooked up the airy follow focus to it and it's possible to do that because you can see here we have a gear on the focus barrel. That's a 32 pitch gear. It is the same uh, pitch on all cine style lenses. So any professional follow focus will interface with this lens. And we use the follow focus. As you can see, we rolled through here. Uh, we use this to check something called breathing. And what happens is we uh, would roll the focus from one end to the other, from infinity to minimum, minimum to infinity. And we evaluated uh, using the ABLE resolution chart to see if there was any change in the size of the image. And that change in the size of the image is known as breathing. And on other lenses, if you go through the full focus range, this has a 200 degree uh, focus range, by the way, or a rotation range. It sometimes other lenses you'll notice it almost looks as if you've zoomed because the uh, angle of view or the size of the image changes as focus does. This lens has absolute minimum breathing. Next down on here we have our uh, zoom ring, and again we have a 32 pitch gear on that and we use that in the rental bay. We hooked up a zoom motor to it and we use something called a microforce. And the microforce allows us to have uh, controlled zooming on the lens. We used it to test for something known as tracking. And what we did was we put a white crosshair on the LCD of the FS5 and we matched it up to some black crosshairs on the ABLE resolution chart. And we slowly zoomed out and we looked to see if there was any change in the overlay of the white lines or the white crosshair on the camera with the black crosshairs of the chart. If you see any drifting between those two, uh, that is known as a, a, a tracking error or it's a shifting in the image. And this lens was really great with its tracking. Everything looked very nice. The uh, iris ring here has 32 pitch as well and is a T2.9 lens. Very nice to have that. That is the same stop on the 50 to 135. And when you couple that T2.9 with the base ISOs of our 4K cameras these days, it really gives you a great combination to be able to shoot in a huge uh, range of different lighting scenarios with either no or minimal lighting setups. So combination of the T-stop and what we have available in camera ISOs make this uh, very flexible. Now this lens, as I said, is a cine style, but it has borrowed a couple of attributes from ENG lenses. The first one is the macro adjustment that we have here. And what I did was the minimum focus on this lens is two feet, 10 inches. 
If you have something closer than that, macro will allow you to get that. So we push the focus chart in really close. As you can see, Sophie engaged the macro here, and we got a very close focus. So it's a fantastic option. It allows you to not have to carry a macro lens in your kit, and it also saves you from having to put filters in front of the uh, lens to get a close-up shot. In addition to that, we also have this black knob down here. If I loosen this, you're going to notice that this entire back section here starts to move. What that is is a back focus adjustment. Back focus is something that we typically would have seen on E and G style lenses. And what it does is it allows us to make sure that the focus is accurate through the entire zoom range. Essentially how this works is you want to check back focus with the iris all the way open. You want to zoom in on something, get focus, zoom out as wide as you can and see if that focus is still maintained. If it's not, you adjust the back focus, get it sharp, and then zoom back in and confirm that it's sharp on when it's zoomed in. Having that uh, allows us to quickly and accurately check to make sure that the lens is optimally set up and ready to go. The front element has a threaded uh, housing and that will take 82 millimeter thread in filters. You could opt also to go with the outer diameter, which is about 85 millimeters. It does come with a clamp on sunshade. Uh, it's important to note that that sunshade is just for blocking sun. It does not have a thread on the inside of it. So you might opt to have a third party clamp on sunshade for square filters. That wraps up my look at the Fujinon MK18-55 and the MK50-135 from Fujinon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.